Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to walk through the problems that you're going to see on your practice final. And the practice final is longer than the actual final. Some of these problems will be on the online portion, some on the paper portion, but these are all the problem types that you should be familiar with. So in the first one, it's going to ask you to solve for a variable. It may have a fraction in it like this one. It may not be the exact same one. Um, I'm going to start off by getting rid of this h. I'm going to divide both sides by h. And that gives me a over h. And then I'm going to get rid of the 1 half by multiplying both sides by 2. You can think of that as 2 or 2 over 1. But that 2 would cancel that 2 on that side. And then I'm going to multiply by 2 over here. And that's going to give me 2a over h equals b plus b. And I'm not solving for that capital B, so I want to get that by itself. So I'm going to do the last thing here is subtract b from both sides. And I have 2a over h minus b is equal to capital B. And you can put that, it doesn't matter which side of the, the equation that your capital B goes on as long as it's isolated and everything else is on the other side. Okay. For the second one, we're going to go back to, we did some of this in Math 96. Um, find the equation of a line given two points. You're going to start off and subtract the y values on the top and the x values in the denominator. And so we can call this our x1 and y1 point. It doesn't matter which point you call that. If you do it accurately, you will get the same answer. And then I'm going to say then I have y2, which is negative 2 minus, because that's part of that equation, y1, which is 3. This is finding the slope. And then I have x2, which is 2, minus negative 6. So I'm going to have to put the minus minus in there. And then if I simplify that, I get negative 5 on the top, and 2 plus 6, or 8 on the bottom. Now I have to find what a b is, because when we're saying finding the equation of a line, we're talking about the slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. And so we have to find out what b is. We have a couple of different x and y's to choose from. I'm just going to pick this point here. That's going to be my x value I'm going to put in. I know the m value that's going to go in, and this is going to be my y value. So I'm going to say negative 2 equals negative 5 eighths times 2 plus b. And then I'm going to simplify this. Negative 2 is negative 10 over 8 plus b. And I know that negative 10 over 8 is negative 5 fourths because I can reduce that. So I think I'm going to say let's add 5 fourths to both sides. Now notice I simplified that. And so I'm adding something that's equivalent. Those are going to cancel out. I just reduced. 10 eighths to 5 fourths, and then I, since it's a minus, I'm going to add that, and I'm going to add 5 fourths over here. I could have canceled here and made that a 4, but anyways, um, now I want to add negative 2 and positive 5 fourths. Negative 2, if you think about that as negative 2 over 1, and you want that to be a 4 on the bottom, then you would multiply the top and the bottom by 4. So you should see that that actually equals negative 8 over 4 negative 8 over 4 is negative 2. Once you figure that out, then you say, I have negative 8 fourths and positive 5 fourths, so that's negative 3 fourths. And that's what b equals. And now I want to put that in back into this equation. I know the m and I know the b. So my final answer is going to be negative 5 eighths x minus 3 fourths. And that's how we're going to do that one. The next thing you're going to be asked to do is simplify um, radical expressions. The square root of 4 is 2. You can do that on your calculator. They don't always come out to be equal, though, or even. But the, that is 2. And then to simplify a variable expression, you just take the, the um, exponent and divide by 2 because we're talking about a square root. We don't see it, but there's just a little 2 in there, imaginary, that we know is there. And so 2 goes into 2 one time, so we would bring out, this would just be 2x. The square root of 100 is 10, 
and then 2 goes into 6 three times, just dividing this exponent by 2, and so we end up with y to the third power. Those came out nice because 2 goes into 6 and 2 evenly. Sometimes we can have something where it doesn't go evenly, and so we want to do that. First of all, I can say how many times does 2 go into 6 three times. So I'm going to bring out 3 to the third power. Um, I think the, co the computer, uh, when you put that in, if it's on the online, will take it as 3 to the third. You could also put 27. It would probably accept that also. And then I want to think about this. Here's how I would think about it. I did the, th the, the uh, 3 to the sixth power already. I simplified that. If I was thinking about a to the seventh, I would think about a to the sixth and a to the first because 6 plus 1 is 7, and I know I can take out a 6 because 2 is into 6 evenly. So that brings out a to the third, but I cannot take out that single a, so that would still be under the radical. And then I would think about b to the tenth. Well, 2 goes into 10 evenly, so that's b to the fifth, and so I end up having this expression after I simplify. All right, and then down here, we're asked to multiply. You can use the shortcut for multiplication, that's fine. You can also FOIL it by writing it out side by side and distributing 3t times 3t is 9t squared, and then 3t times minus 2 is negative 6t, negative 2 times 3t is negative 6t again, and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and then you're going to add those terms in the middle, 9t squared minus 12t plus 4. All right, over here we're simplifying an expression. This is written kind of small. I hope you can read that, but the first thing I'm going to do is simplify the numerator and the denominator separately, and then I'll look at it. So a to the third to the third, when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. That's a to the ninth power. g to the sixth to the third is g to the eighteenth power. And x to the third, this is really x to the first, sorry, to the third. So we have one times three or x to the third power. Down here we have x to the fourth to the fourth. So four times four is sixteen. We have g to the zero times four. Zero times four is still zero. I don't need to write that at all because anything to the zero power, like zero to, it's just like timesing that by one. So I don't even need to write that. And then we have x to the fourth to the fourth, which is x to the sixteenth. Now I'm going to simplify this. Where do I have more a's? I have more a's on the bottom. By how many? Seven. I know that I have more g's on the top because I only have g's on the top. So I have g to the 18th on the top, but here I have seven more a's. Oh, I got that. And for x's, I have 13 more x's. 16 minus 3 is 13, and those x's are, there's more on the, in the denominator, so that's where they would be when I was done. All right, that is the first six problems. We're going to break this up so you don't sit through too much, and I'll do the next set um, soon.